you know, after Roy um, found out, you know, after we just identified this, the willpower was something real, um, after they identified the different manifestations of it, and after they, you know, saw the source of it, this glucose, they then started looking at ways, well, is there any way that you can improve your willpower? Um, and at first, they, they, they tried various techniques. They tried to get people to train things like by, by controlling their emotions. Would that actually build up people's willpower to, if they would ask people to try and control their emotions? And that was a dismal failure. Because you really, it, you know, in a retrospect, it's not that surprising that you don't really control how you feel. You just, you do feel that way. But, they, but one of the control groups in the experiment, or they thought it was just going to be kind of a control group, kind of a, a stupid thing, actually turned out to their surprise to work, which is they sent some students home for a couple of weeks and said, just for the next couple of weeks, just practice work on your posture. Just sit up straight when you're at meals, when you're studying, when you're in class. Just try to remember to do that whenever you can. And two weeks later, when the students came back to the laboratory, they were the ones who were able to actually ha do things better. They had nothing to do with posture. Their self-control had improved in all these other ways. Um, and this gave rise to this, you know, this idea that, uh, this analogy that willpower is like a muscle, that it's something, it gets fatigued as you use it during the day, but, it, but, but you can build up the long-term stamina. It's like a runner who gets tired during, during the course of a race, but if you run every day, your stamina is built up some. And there have been some very interesting experiments in Australia with students where they um, found that, you know, when the students, um, some students went and, and, and were given training in, in financial planning to work on their finances. Uh, the other students got work in, um, in study habits, and other ones worked on, um, on, on physical exercise. They had someone who would sit with them and make a plan for you're going to work out so many times, and you'll do it. And not surprisingly, of course, everybody improved in the area where they got special attention. But the really gratifying part of the experiment was that the students w got better in the other areas too. Someone who who had started working out more and it's, it gotten more disciplined about exercise turned out to do better at studying too, and also to, to, you know to be eating more healthily and also better at financial planning. And so that there seemed to be this idea that strengthening self-control in one area builds it up over the long haul for, for um, in other areas as well. And we call uh, the rediscovery of, self, of willpower the rediscovery of, of humans' greatest strength. That, that, you know, the people with stronger willpower, they tend to do better in school and at work. They're healthier, they're wealthier, they're happier. Their personal relationships are better. Their children are more likely to thrive. And, you know, again and again, you know, researchers find that there are two predictors of success. Intelligence, your IQ, and your self-control. And there's not a lot you can do about uh, your IQ, at least we haven't figured out how to do much about IQ, but we do know how to do something about self-control.